content or you have to be the person who really learns quickly the new stuff. Uh, in, from my perspective, if someone wants to be a clear teacher in the preschool, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier because the experiments that you do in this bilingual education are the ones that you normally do in, even if you teach in your native language. So uh, I would advise all the preschool teachers who are interested in bilingual education not to worry too much. The only thing you have to concentrate on is to improve your language. That's all. The, the rest you have from your experience. Uh, because uh, CLEAL is content and language uh, teaching and uh, there is another thing that you have to be aware and again uh, at the preschool level it's something that you are really familiar with you do not concentrate on grades or rewarding kids what you concentrate on is uh, teaching them how to cooperate how to be and stay creative um, how to deal with uh, things that are different for them, how to experience, um, how to synthesize, how to analyze, all the things that are so easy and natural for children that age. When we think about the effectiveness of language teaching, I think it's the same as with the effectiveness of teaching anything. Uh, first of all, we have to understand the whole nature of learning. Children will learn new things, they will not learn old things. So when you design a lesson, you have to try to, to match it to their needs, uh, to combine it with what they already know. And during the lesson, at the very beginning, you should always find the connection between what they already know and what new you have to show them. Another thing is emotions. There is one emotion that blocks everything, that's fear. The other emotions help you to learn. So if you make your lessons pleasant, funny, surprising, children will understand and, and uh, learn more. Uh, another thing is to teach them useful things because their brain will analyze new content, whether it is something of any use or it's let's say rubbish so when you teach them uh, it's good to arrange situations like you play a shop or you play that they are in a zoo and you show them the situation that may happen in the real world and when you let them train it after you introduce them to new topic and you let them train it on their own uh, we can be sure that when they become creative in this area, leaving the classroom, they will be able to, to use the knowledge that you introduced. When we want the bilingual education to be successful, uh, and we want to limit the use of their native language, we have to make use of any visual helps that we can get. So they can be pictures like uh, real photos or flashcards. We can also make use of uh, ICT, I mean information and communication technologies. Uh, in, on the internet we will find lots of applications and websites that are in English and they will be really helpful when we want to teach uh, a subject. So when we want to teach the content, we can find uh, videos, songs, poems, plays, uh, online games, so anything that we can use during the lesson. Uh, moreover, there are uh, different websites for teachers uh, full of worksheets. So we are not that alone that we were in the past when we had no support from teachers from all over the world. Now everything is um, available and sometimes it is accessible for free. That of course is even better. The safest moment to start learning foreign languages is when a child already mastered the basic system of a mother tongue, which means that the child 
has a basic vocabulary, structured phonology system, mastered grammar system, and they can communicate in an effective way. Call for help, ask for support, have a simple dialogue, common changes that, that, that take place in the surroundings. A child has to understand verbal communication in the mother tongue. That is, understand the mother tongue as far as comments are concerned, explanations are given. Before we start teaching a foreign language, a child has to master the mother tongue in such a way that the expression and understandable not only for the people in their surroundings who often stay with the child, but also for the people who meet the child for the first time. Of course, it's not the moment when the mother tongue has been truly mastered, but then there is no risk that introduction of the second language will cause overlapping of the language system. Uh, the mastery of the mother tongue usually takes place around the age of three. The introduction of foreign language is very beneficial because of the great plasticity of the nervous system and also in natural way the, the child phonology attitude is created. That is, a child absorbs the correct articulation of a foreign language in an in, in automatic way because phonology attitude is the ability to absorb foreign phonemes is natural. A child can master the way of articulation, the rhythm, the accent of a language, both sentence and verbal, in a natural way and almost identical to proper sounds of a foreign language. In older people, structuring of the articulation takes place as a secondary process, which causes articulate deformation we are not able to master identically sounding phonemes. A child that has not mastered the basics in the mother tongue may mix the uh, language systems. Communication disturbance can take place. A child uses the, for, the words from, for example, Polish and English language all, all alternatively without realizing that they are using two different language systems. Introduction of a second language in the education of disabled children is useful for them as long as they acquire the basic of a mother tongue system. If that has not taken place, the process of teaching a child foreign language may be for them a situation not only stressful, but it may cause further linguistic difficulties. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Karolina Mikalek. I, I work in a kindergarten number 206 in Uch in Poland and I would like uh, to say a couple of words uh, about teaching um, English uh, the younger students uh, I mean the kindergarten students um, well on my classes always the most important uh, was a great fun and a nice friendly atmosphere um, be, uh, between youngsters, uh, because only in such, in such way, in such, uh, atmosphere, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can teach and our, uh, teaching might be, uh, successful. Um, obviously, the topic is also very important and, uh, learning new vocabulary and very easy grammar structures by, by students, but, uh, the most important thing is uh, that the classes uh, must be uh, nice, funny, wonderful and fantastic uh, uh, for students. Um, usually um, a very, very nice uh, thing uh, in the English classes is the cooperation. Uh, students love cooperating with each other or uh, doing something together, working in teams, uh, especially uh, if they can gain some points or they uh, can win or lose. So this is highly motivating. Uh, this is a good way to learn more and more because everyone wants to be better. But obviously... Uh, the rewards are for everyone and and uh, no one uh, might feel lost in that. 
Um, well, uh, working in a kindergarten uh, among uh, clear methodology uh, is uh, it's not always very easy because uh, young students very often they they cannot write or, or read so classes uh, are usually focused uh, on uh, great fun like singing or moving also games so so it's a big role for a teacher to uh, to prepare classes in such a way that students just simply loving love it and during that time they also learn something uh, my favorite didactic resources um, are flashcards uh, because uh, well they are actually very well known by everyone and actually um, a teacher can use them in a million ways being honest so uh, they, they can be used in a game uh, to maybe to introduce a new material, maybe to uh, revise something, revise a old topic, well-known topic. They might be also used uh, during the boarding game, which I also really like, especially the the Polish ones, uh, which are well known to students uh, because they use them. Uh, during the Polish classes, uh, for example, before English. Uh, this is the way, uh, the only foreign thing uh, the students learn is, is vocabulary, like English vocabulary, because uh, if I use, for example, the boarding game, uh, which students are played uh, already in the past, uh, means that the roles are very well known by students and the only thing uh, they have to use, which is new for them, is English vocabulary or very easy grammar structures. Uh, so I actually uh, find it very motivating and quite successful of my classes. Obviously, the music and songs are, are always great to use, especially especially to uh, warm up the classes uh, because uh, students love singing, especially the uh, so, so young ones. And uh, they love moving during singing. So in the same time, they can learn, they can revise, they can also move a little bit. It's always such a great fun to, to do something like that. Um, Always very attractive for students is a multimedia board. Uh, well, because nowadays it's very trendy, uh, like all the tablets, computers are very a uh, fantastic way for uh, for young and for even older uh, to learn from. So, so all the task they could uh, come to the multimedia board and do something. Maybe point or fix the correct answer or or point the the stuff. It was always so uh, motivating for them and so trendy and fashionable. So I always found it uh, a very good way to uh, to to learn something more or to or to revise an old um, a vocabulary. Um, sometimes it happened that I used uh, already made resources, like the resources made by um, uh, by other teachers, uh, who, for example, prepared them to uh, lead the classes in Polish language. So then I I could use it in um, English classes. So the resources were already known for students. So again, we had a situation that that the only foreign think was uh, just English vocabulary and obviously I were uh, using them in according to clear methodology uh, so so they were also a good fun uh, for students um, 
actually are uh, very, very new. The didactic resource that I uh, met actually two years ago when I started working in a kindergarten uh, in a CLIL uh, was, uh, was number, Welcome to Numberland. It was a uh, well, perfect way uh, to teach uh, maths. Uh, the young students. Uh, so uh, from here, I would like to say hello to Barbara Schindelhauer, uh, the person who I met and who I cooperate with about uh, about the methodology of uh, of uh, teaching maths. Uh, the youngest people. It's a very. Um, I'm sure she she she's going to tell you more about that, uh, but it's a perfect way of uh, uh, teaching and learning maths uh, because uh, maths is always a little bit uh, difficult to explain and a little bit uh, difficult to to teach the youngsters. But um, in this way, uh, actually everything you can show uh, because you've got loads of stuff. Uh, like houses, colors, carpets, so everything you can use, you can also show, you can you can point, you can think. So um, actually, the resource is very attractive for young, uh, but also very clear. Even uh, even I can easily say that I've never liked maths before, but now I love. Um, Okay, so I think it's all I would like to say. Uh, and uh, the only stuff I would like to repeat again is working in a kindergarten especially must be a really great fun and the classes are provided in a good, friendly atmosphere. So only in this way uh, students are too very motivated to to learn vocabulary and easy uh, grammar structures. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Ela Dziedzic and I teach English in primary school number 41 in Łódź in Poland. And I tell you how I use clear. During the lessons with younger students who don't understand new words, I usually translate the new vocabulary into their mother tongue. In order, older classes, I use very simple phrases and words. Sometimes I write uh, the new vocabulary and on the blackboard and systematically repeat it. To introduce the new topic, I present it by playing a film to the class or a song or a cartoon. Uh, it would be it would be much easier for students if the topic of a lesson involves any information or characters that they are interested in. It depends on the subject, but very often we use four skills during the lesson. There is always a task, uh, what students should do and what activities they have to follow. After the repetition, the communication is easier and students use words willingly. When we conduct the lessons, we try to use non-standard materials like pictures, photos, clowns and scarf, crosswords, plush toys, worksheets, even Lego blocks and also music instruments. The students learn in a nice atmosphere, the lessons are more interesting and students are more active. For example, during maths we use interactive boards, special remote controls that are called responses, board games, money, notes and coins. Uh, in physical education lesson, the teacher shows short film films on YouTube to indicate the correct rules or fair play, uh, accurate holding and catching. Different type of music is also used to practice fitness or to teach the folk dances. It is also possible to organize outdoor classes, what is really desirable by students.
the lessons become more attractive if you use type recorder, projector, interactive board, computer, responses, these are remote controls, cubes. If you have already these kind of tools, you can show many different kind of presentations, films, songs, and even play games on active on interactive board. And the results of teaching CLIL are visible, of course. The lessons are more active, the students understand more, they are, more, they are also more eager to communicate with each other. They are more creative and motivated. They also try to develop their language skills. The students are happy when they finally understand the songs or short stories. We can notice some progress in students' English knowledge concerning the school subject. What is more, they observe that the foreign language they learn is necessary and used in everyday life. Being invited to the project, uh, Bilingual Education a Step Ahead, I have had a chance to observe many uh, activities uh, organized by the teachers for the children of play school both in Poland and Romania. I didn't have a chance to observe all of the uh, classes because that was impossible, but the ones I have observed uh, dealt mostly with uh, maths education, with uh, linguistic education or literature education, um, science experiments, uh, and these were wonderful experiences in which children were totally engaged. And uh, what was interesting it was the teachers who were a bit tense, a bit, introducing the concepts, but as they went on, uh, the children uh, responded to that very, very well. And uh, later on, they were so much engaged in the lesson and in experimenting, in touching things, in communicating, that they, uh, well, sometimes they, they really forgot uh, that uh, they were using uh, parts of a different language. What is important here is that uh, some uh, teachers who were observing their children in action, they were also uh, sometimes uh, a bit, they felt a, a bit uneasy about uh, the situation. They were not sure if their children would respond properly. Natural thing for international interaction, but uh, very soon they discovered that there was no need to worry because the children, once they got interested in the concept, in the situation, they simply forgot about their teachers and uh, no mother tongue was uh, really needed to, to, to be uh, helpful. That was fantastic. And I'm very grateful to all the teachers who took part in the project. You are very brave people very brave people who uh, took the challenge to do something which is difficult for you because sometimes you don't feel ready for being able to express things in English in a natural way. That's, that's okay, that's really okay, but you are brave enough to share it with others. And observing you in action, I actually observed a very good uh, communication process which was adapted to the children very well and children, children's response actually that you could observe was the best reward for you. So go on that way. Thank you very much. If it comes to further teacher training um, from what I have observed, um, I would recommend actually only one thing, that is uh, linguistic education. I mean uh, training in the sense of learning the language and, and applying it uh, to your uh, class activities. Uh, play school or kindergarten teachers, uh, they are professionals in what they do. They understand children's needs very well. They know how to respond to them. They know what content to choose 
uh, to be successful in uh, children education. So the more uh, language you learn, the easier it will be for you to sound naturally and to behave naturally. Because language barrier seems to be the only problem for the teachers. They understand the methodology and the philosophy of CLIL very well, and the only thing they need is uh, learn uh, the language. And if you do, if you keep learning, you will very soon find it very natural and very easy to apply all those combined things. That means clear methodology and language context. And uh, you are on the right way, on the right track, just keep practicing. No matter what mistakes you make on the way, children don't understand the mistakes anyway. <laughs> so uh, keep trying, learn the language and you will be very successful in that.